Okay, in this presentation, we're going to look at random number generation. So essentially what we have here is, the question is basically, generate three samples, three random samples from the binomial distribution, okay, where n is equal to three, and probability of success in any independent trial is 0 0.4, using the following values from the uniform distribution. So essentially what's happened here is we've run a uniform random number generator and generated three, these three numbers here. 0 0.196, 0 0.351 and 0 0.975. Okay, so what we have to do is the uniform random number generator process is fairly straightforward but essentially it's just to show how you would be able to properly create a plausible binomial distribution with the correct uh, distribution essentially for n equal to 3 and p equal to 0 0.4. Now first thing we actually have to sort of set in our minds are the possible outcomes, the possible values that would uh, be generated from this process. So n is equal to 3, the number of successes uh, out of three independent trials, the possible values there are 0, 1, 2, and 3. So essentially just a quick statement of the sample space, okay? That's really it, okay? You can't have um, an outcome of 4, you can't have an outcome of minus 1, you should have an outcome of 0, so just be re recall that, you know, very fundamental stuff that you might have seen earlier on about sample spaces, this comes up into play here. So that's the important thing there. Now, so the next thing here is, it's a very procedural, okay? Now I'm gonna work on the basis that you're familiar with the binomial distribution and you've seen this formula before. Here n is equal to three and p is equal to 0 0.4. So I've just sort of put in those values there, okay? So three choose x for x equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3, and so on. Essentially what I have here in this t uh, column here is the outcome of those of that formula there. So that's the probability mass function, and these are the corresponding probabilities, okay? So if you're not familiar with where that is coming from, just a quick look, a revision of the binomial distribution would be helpful there. Okay, now for generating random numbers, this is what we have to do. We're gonna use the cumulative distribution function, okay, or the, the f of my uh, the f function capital f function here actually i won't go into that too much but the, it, it well i will a little bit but not so uh clearly as you will sort of see later on okay so what i'm going to do here is use these values here and generate the cumulative sum okay so 0 0.216 just that's it to start off with okay 0 0.432 and plus 0 0.216 that's probably x less than or equal to 1 okay which is probably x equal to 0 plus the probability of equal to 1 that's it there and so on okay and it should end up as 1 uh, when you finish off okay now the lower bound so essentially what i'm doing is i'm set i'm generating uh, generating two tables here the lower bound and the upper bound now the upper bound is um the probability of x less than or equal to x, okay, for x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here, what I'm doing here is the probability of x less than or equal to x minus 1, okay, which is the integer before each uh, each of these, okay. So x minus 1, in this case, is 0, okay. Just start off with 0 there. So the probability of x less than or equal to 0 here, as x is equal to 1, Okay, so this is the probability of x less than or equal to 0 here, okay? Likewise, this is the probability of x less than or equal to 1, where here x is equal to 2, and so on. You get the idea, okay? Now, so essentially what we're generating here is an interval, okay? So, uh, the intervals are as follows. 0 to... 0 0.216 okay that's our first interval 0 0.216 to 0 0.648 okay 
Uh, the next interval, actually, I didn't mention it here. It doesn't come up in this question here. But the next interval would be 0 0.648 to 0 0.936. Okay. And then the last interval there would be 0 0.936 to 1. So it's essentially, I'm just using these as the upper and lower bound of an interval. Okay. So if a uniform value which we generate falls into one of those intervals that means we that gives us our value of x the uh, the simulated value of x okay so essentially what we have here is four intervals four bins okay each with a lower bound and an upper bound okay and they're all mutually exclusive so you can only be in one of these bins if you are a uniform random variable so the first bin there is for e x equal to zero and then the second bin is for x equal to one and x equal to two and x equal to three okay so essentially what we have to do is determine which bin does each of our three uniform numbers fall into in this case 0 0.196 it's definitely going to fall into that one so that gives us x equal to zero okay 0 0.351 falls into our second bin, so that means x is equal to 1, okay. Uh, 0 0.975 is in the interval 0 0.936 to 1, so that's in our third bin, okay. So that's x equal to 3. So the simulated values are going to be 0, 1, and 3. Just say for argument's sake, we had uh, just another number here, 0. Oops, 0 0.751, that doesn't look good, but that would fall into our this bin here, and that would give us x equal to 2. You get the idea. Now, so correctly, the, 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 these, I, I went to three decimal places, but you go to four or five decimal places, you know, it's not a, the mutual exclusion principle comes into play. So essentially, you can make up your own little rules here, uh, about uh, defined limits okay so you could go like that or just a sort of um handle those very unusual cases where you could be right on the edge okay of a one of those intervals or right in the boundary it's, it's because we're working to three decimal places you know uh you wouldn't see it but really a computer would be working to 16 decimal places but even still you would have to some sort of uh, real consideration will have to take place for that effect. Anyway, we'll leave it there.